the U.S. selections update for October 19th. I hope that what I'm saying now will not become obsolete very soon because it's one of the wildest election campaigns ever. Not only it's not my opinion, it's uh, the opinions of experts following the United States elections. 2016 is very different from the previous elections of 2012, for example, between Romney and Obama. Uh, this is, these are happier days between the Trumps and the Clintons in uh, Donald Trump's wedding with Melania back in 2005. Another thing that happened in 2005 was a scandalous tape by uh, Donald Trump. Uh, he was recorded saying basically that he can commit sexual assault because he's a star, he's entitled to do whatever he wants. Uh, that had implications. Some Republicans distanced themselves away from Trump. It hurt him in the polls. He was already down following the first debate. Things uh, looked bad for him. The second debate was very, very ugly. Trump denied any wrongdoing. He denied uh, assaulting, uh, sexually assaulting women. And then many women came out confirming the assaults he basically admitted to doing. He was already in trouble for tax returns. Uh, um, I must say that also Clinton, uh, of course, is in trouble because of the email leaks. Every day, WikiLeaks releases more and more uh, emails from her campaign manager. Some really ugly uh, and nasty <laughs> manipulations are revealed there. But these normal uh, political manipulations seem nothing in comparison to Trump. Uh, anyway, bottom line, polls show Clinton leading by 7%, which is quite a lot. Looking to the past, and past performance does not imply future results. Um, at this point in the race, um, Clinton's lead is significant and insurmountable. But uh, this, this is not a normal election cycle and anything can happen. This is the electoral map according to 538 uh, by Nate Silver, a site that aggregates and models all the polls. They show an 87% chance of Clinton winning, uh, which is very high, of course. And 7.1 at the moment percent lead in uh, the national uh, polls. Of course, what matters is states. But anyway, it uh, looks like a big victory for Hillary Clinton. Uh, Marcus prefer Hillary Clinton, not because they're fans of Democrats. They prefer Republicans, prefer a more pro-market, pro-business. But Clinton is a known politician, mainstream politician. And uh, Trump is disruption, anti-trade, uh, enlarging the deficit, and basically a uh, wild card with problematic temperament. Okay, so anyway, what's next on the agenda? We have the last presidential debate, uh, well, tonight, one GMT. It's the third and last one. The first one was described as a victory for Clinton. Uh, Trump was not doing well, and then he got in trouble for, um, well, many things. <laughs> the second debate was just very nasty, uh, basically ended in a tie. This one is hosted by um, uh, Fox News. Okay, so it might be more favorable for Trump, but we don't know. They are uh, pro-Republican, but mainstream, not always pro-Trump. Uh, there is a chance for a Trump comeback. It's his last expected comeback. Remember, most events that impact the elections are unexpected. Not It's not economic indicators. It's not non-farm perils. Uh, it's, as I said, 2016 is very different compared to 2012. Polls move very quickly. Okay, we had big, big fluctuations. Basically, every month looked different. Uh, many voters are still undecided voting for third party candidates or are disgusted by both candidates. Anything can happen. But there are already reports that Trump already seeks the next big thing a media startup, a media enterprise. Um, that he's already in touch with the next thing. That means he's already, uh, well, admitting or thinking about a loss or, or he never meant to take it seriously. Anyway, um, at the moment, it seems that, again, uh, Clinton is winning big time. He's beginning to complain about the elections being rigged. And that's what losers do. Uh, again, let's, let's uh, shift back to markets. Markets are paying more attention because we're three weeks, less than three weeks towards the elections in the world's biggest economy, biggest superpower. Markets are pricing at the moment a Clinton victory. At this moment, if Trump wins, it'll be bigger than Brexit, okay? 
because um, it has big implications on trade relations with not only with Mexico and Canada, but with the European Union, with everybody, with relations with Russia, you name it. Which currencies are should, should, which currencies should we watch? We've seen in the first presidential debate a big impact uh, on the Mexican peso. Um, Trump promised to build a wall, uh, and that Mexico will pay for this wall. So, if Trump wins the third debate, it's bad for the Mexican peso. If he loses, uh, it's good for the Mexican peso. We don't uh, talk about this currency uh, too much. Uh, also, the Canadian dollar has some impact. Canada is a more diverse economy. and uh, But anyway, Trump uh, seem, is perceived as bad for Canada, for the Canadian dollar, and Clinton better for the Canadian dollar. The Russian ruble, uh, Trump has been uh, uh, sort of cozy with Russia, so the Russian ruble can act in the other direction. Trump victory, good for the ruble. Trump loss in the debate, bad for the ruble. And dollar again, of course, the yen remains the... Uh, safe haven currency. So uh, if we see Clinton winning uh, in the debate, at least in the next few days, continuing the lead, it's good for dollar yen. If Trump claws back, it's good for, um, it's it's bad for dollar yen, good for the safe haven Japanese yen. Okay, so in the past few weeks, we've seen a big shift towards Clinton. It's basically priced in um with markets, but anything can change. It's one of the wildest and ugliest elections uh, seen in recent history. Okay. Uh, 